The Cromwell Pull Award went to Kyle Gaffigan for round one and Sage Dijau for round two. Gaffigan finished second to his teammate Carlo De Preto last week, and Dejao, well, threw it off the course. We don't have too much to talk about coming out of Saitama. Scott Dalitz did have some rather unsavory comments about Edwin Shortsovsky and uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov after his victory, though. I think it would be in poor taste to repeat exactly what he said, but he didn't sound entirely grateful to be able to hold off road racing veterans such as them. I'm surprised he didn't catch more flack for that. In other news, Paul Lyons is out of the 54 Team Burr car for this race. Apparently that team only brought one car for each of their drivers, and Derek Dunning wrecked his at Saitama. Seeing as Dunning is bringing a little bit of cash to that team and Lyons isn't, they stuck Dunning in the 54 car and renumbered it as the 68. However, Lyons isn't left without a ride. Greaseberger is giving him a shot in the 09 car, and uh, Lyons actually qualified rather well for his race, so it'll be interesting to see what he can do now that he has some decent equipment. Speaking of Team Burr, I hear that AJ Young is getting a test with none other than M&J Racing. Most of you probably just groaned as much as I did when I heard that. I can't say I'm looking forward to that. Now, on to the Nemoto Tokyo 120Ks. Kyle Gafkin has Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. starting on his right side. We know how good Quiggles is at these road courses, but Gafkin gets a great start over the Division by Zero car heading down into turn number one. And there you see Carlo De Prado, Gafkin's teammate, the winner of round one at Saitama last week, going for third place. And we've got trouble in the back! A big, big pile up! And it looks like Lucas Sweeney and Mori Uchimoto were at the front of this. Sweeney uh, gets pushed into the 87 by Joseph Howard and all hell breaks loose in the first corner. I see Rybert Scott and Libby Bell have gone around. Todd Radarschik, Todd Stater, and Mac Ryland have some pretty significant damage and they're still wrecking. Rachel Rainsford and Rip Tyler get together while they're limping away and Rainsford goes around. Rainsford is coming off of a streak of seven straight top ten finishes. Well... I don't think she's going to be getting that today. However, on the bright side, Rainsford was recently confirmed to stay at Gravity Racing Inc. in 2013, so she's got that to look forward to. Coming to the end of the first lap, Joseph Howard turns Ricky Navarro into the side of Zachary Zins. Neither of them were intending to pit, it looks like, but um, they decide to make repairs anyway. That was quite the unusual lapse of concentration from Howard. Let's go on board with Carlo De Preto, who is currently running in third place, and he just gets into the back of Quiggles. So that's another lapse of concentration from an MRD driver. And now Shinji Tanaka in the 839 has a run on De Preto. In the past two races, Tanaka has uh, managed to throw away the lead. But when he's in any other position, he's fine, and he's even making a rather impressive move around the outside of DePreto, and I think he's gonna solidify the spot. So now Tanaka moves up into third behind Quiggles and Gaffigan. In sixth place behind Yevgeny Kuznetsov is Ryo Akazaro, making his second Elite Series start. He struggled a bit at Saitama, at least I think by his standards, he would, he would tell you that he struggled, because he uh, comes from a road racing background. But here at the Tokyo Motorsport Stadium, he's very familiar with the track. In fact, I think most of the Japanese drivers in the field have had quite a bit of experience at this track. It is the largest indoor race course in the world. The Elite Series is running on the full configuration today, which is 2.47 miles long. Aoi Tanazaka, the Aztec Autosport team owner, is currently running in 10th in the opening laps. Despite the fact that Tanazaka is outperforming the team's regular driver, Jessica Graham, she has said that her role in these races is strictly R&D and that Jessica Graham's position is safe. Jack Dempsey blows up after being caught up in the lap one shenanigans. Dempsey put together some pretty strong runs at Motegi and Saitama, and he's going to hand the car back over to Greg Woodard when we get back to the States. But it's unfortunate that Dempsey is going to end his run in this car like this. Big Speedfoot in the 14 also blows up shortly after Jack Dempsey. Big Speedfoot's been running rather quietly. We haven't talked about him too much this season, but he is fifth in points coming into this race, so this is probably going to hurt him. And Foot comes to a stop right in the middle of the track, but there are a lot of cranes on hand here, so there won't need to be a safety car. Yevgeny Kuznetsov decides that the lapped car of Ali Riggs is being annoying and kind of 
tries to punt her out of the way. Riggs did not qualify well, and she was caught up in the lap one shenanigans, and she's been off pace ever since. Of course, as we all know, Allie Riggs is planning on leaving Riggs Motorsports at the end of the season and forming her own team. Now, if she's doing that because of her own team's poor performance this year, I don't think she'll be much better on her own as- Oh, no! Ryo Kazaru just dumped the 19 and that got Edwin Schwarzlowski caught up. Well, at least we know that more than one person thinks that Riggs is being an annoying backmarker right now. Mori Uchimoto, who we very briefly mentioned on the first lap, goes up in smoke. Ujimoto, the self-proclaimed king of the drift, is making his first Starla Elite Series start for MRD Motorsports in the car that Tom Delgado normally drives. But unfortunately, his run comes to an end in the opening laps. Kyle Gaffigan continues to hold a comfortable lead over Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., but he's got the lap car of Ricky Navarro coming up. Oh, Gaffigan's slow! I think he's got a problem! Quiggles takes the lead as Gaffigan, I, I think, has a cut tire. Wow, that's very unfortunate. Gaffigan was um, coming off of his second runner-up finish of the season, and he was actually getting away from Quiggles. Oh, Shinji Tanaka just uh, got to the side of the 37 a bit. That could have been a big wreck. But like I said, Gaffigan was actually pulling a bit on Quiggles. And I personally thought that uh, Quiggles was going to get Gaffigan right at the start and walk off into the distance. But now he's got the opportunity to do so as Gaffigan continues to lose positions. And that can't be good for your car. Having to drive all the way back to the pits on a cut tire, it's got to be tearing the car apart from the inside. Oh! Oh, look out! That was Akuzaru who just got into the back of the 37 and sent him around. Now that's gotta add insult to injury, but Gaffigan finally makes it to the pits. But unfortunately, uh, he's gonna have to go out of the race. Apparently the tire completely tore apart the inside of that car. And again, this puts Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. in the lead of the race. And he's got a very healthy lead over second place Shinji Tanaka. Quiggles is still considered the favorite to win the championship, even though he's run into quite a bit of bad luck lately. But don't forget, he did get four wins earlier in the season, and he's coming off of a third place run at Saitama. Quiggles is definitely putting on a dominant performance that we have not seen from anyone in a number of years. Wiggles and his team owner, uh, Master Cup driver Marcus Leonard, definitely remind me of uh, the days of Kurt Walker and Jeff Keaton back in the mid-90s when they would go out and win everything. Uh, forgive me for getting a bit nostalgic there. Carlo De Preto hits the pit lane on lap number 10. The 26 team definitely has some repairs to make to that car. In the meantime, we have a decent battle going between uh, Aoi Tanizaka and Edwin Schwarzlowski. Schwarzlowski is using the lap 34 car of Ricky Navarro as a pick to get by the 259 car. That is Yarko Forstrom in 10th place lurking back there. We haven't seen too many good runs out of Schwarzlowski this year. But I think you can attribute that to MJ's struggles as a whole, as um, Tanazaka just nearly put Ricky Navarro into the wall. But back to Schwarzlowski, he is slowly starting to put together some better runs. Uh, after all, he did finish second in the second round at Saitama. But um, he was leading at Talladega at the time that the race was called due to Mark Freestone's crash. Ebenezer Quiggles is getting held up by the slow car of Lane Cranston as you have Jenny Kuznetsov turns uh, Shinji Tanaka into the wall from second. Wow, we don't see that from Kuzi every day, and I don't think that's going to go down well with the Japanese crowd. I don't know what that was about, but Tanaka is very heavily damaged to the point of holding up Lake Ruel and uh, Ryo Akazaru, and that is for position. Now here's the onboard shot as uh, the rest of the leaders are catching up to Quiggles and Cranston, and Kuzi just turned him. I don't think you can blame the lap car at all. And here is Joseph Howard getting into another incident, this time with Nick Howard in the 58. The two are unrelated, but um, Joseph Howard just turned him on the straightaway. Wow, Joseph Howard's been a bulldozer today, hasn't he? Ebenezer Quiggles makes his pit stop on lap number 12, and most of the leaders are going to follow suit. In the meantime, here are Mac Ryland and Eric Jackson battling for position, and Ryland just turns Jackson into the wall. I know Ben Atkins and Nami Mura had a problem with Jackson after Motegi, and now it seems that uh, Jackson has an enemy in Ryland, but I don't know what happened between them. 
Rylan's teammate Ryo Akazaro made his pit stop one lap after the rest of the leaders. You have Jenny Kuznetsov beat Quiggles out of the pit lane on the previous lap. And looking on board from Ryo Akazaro, who's still in the pits, there goes Kuzi. Uh, by the 86 car for the lead of the race. And Kuznetsov has a pretty comfortable lead over second place. Oh, and he just ran into the back of the lapped car of Kevin Monroe. Now, obviously, you really can't afford to do that kind of thing when you're leading. Yes, but Kuzi isn't the only one of the who I think are the more reasonable drivers to have left their brains at home today. Joseph Howard can't stop hitting people today. Ryo Akazaro ran a clean race at Saitama last week, but he can't stop hitting people today either. We're running on board with uh, Ryo Akazaro, speaking of him. And oh, he just smashed into the back of a Yarko Forstrom. Now what did I just say? And that was going to be a position battle between the 86 and the 02, as, um... Forstrom was held up behind the lapped car of Bob Steffens. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. is currently running in third. He had a very slow pit stop. He's quite a ways back behind Scott Dalitz, who did not make too many friends with his post-race interview after he won the second round at Saitama. He uh, referred to Yevgeny Kuznetsov as, and I quote, a drunken commie, among other things. Well, he heard that um, Kuznetsov challenged Dalitz to a drift competition a few days after the race, but Dalitz did not take him up on that. Keep in mind that Kuznetsov was a rally driver for a number of years, so make of that as you will. Lane Cranston has blown up after a day of struggling. He was a lap down at this point. And here we have Barton Sandy trying to hold off uh, Rachel Rainsford for a position, and Rainsford just turns Sandy into the wall there. I don't know what that was about. We haven't seen any contact for, between these two all day. With four laps to go, Todd Rodarczyk gets into the back of Ricky Navarro, and that sends Rodarczyk for a spin. So it hasn't been a good few laps for Gravity Racing. And oh, look out! You have Jenny Kuznetsov just sped by there without clobbering the 71, fortunately for him. Let's watch this from Kuznetsov's onboard camera. He sees the um, 71 and leaves plenty of room. So he does seem to be looking ahead a bit more than he was previously in the race. And now with two laps to go, we have uh, Carlo DePreto and Calvin Arrayler battling for position. Ka Arrayler gets frustrated with Jackson holding him up and takes him into the wall, but then Arrayler goes into the wall himself. Well, Arrayler's got to do something to get himself on the highlight reel. He's easily been the most anonymous driver this season. And in the meantime, you have Jenny Kuznetsov, despite a shaky start to this race, maintains his comfortable lead after pit stops to take his second win of the season. Scott Dalitz would remain in second place, but Quiggles was catching him very slowly, but not quick enough to challenge him at the end. Aoi Tanazaka finishes a very impressive fourth after gaining a lot of positions after pit stops. Yarko Forstrom, another top five finish for the Zero team. Edwin Schwarzlowski ran pretty quietly for most of the day. His only real highlight was getting stuffed into the wall early on in the race. Lake Ruel was another driver who ran quietly today. He finished in seventh. Rip Tyler is eighth. Makoto Yamada, another top 10 finish in front of the home crowd. And then Carlo Di Preto uh, salvages a top 10 finish. Now on to round number two, where Seiju Dejao leads the field to the green flag alongside his Kurt Walker Motorsports teammate Nami Mura in the um, Idra colors this week. And Mura gets a great start on the 91 car. But that's not terribly surprising to see that from Mura, uh, that kind of aggression. And down into the first corner, I think Mura might have the edge, but Dejao is battling back. And we do not appear to have a big first turn stack up like we did in the, se in the first round. Anyway, Dejao has a nose on the 39 coming into turn number two, but Mura has the preferred line, and Mura clears the 91 for the lead. And it turned out we did have an accident in the first corner. Watch James West. He piles into the back of the 11 of Patrick Henderson and then goes into the wall. And a couple other cars got swept up in that as Patrick Henderson seems to have broken down after the first corner, and West gets into the back of him again. Takumi Nagata, AJ Young, and Holden Roberts have some significant damage as well. But watch what happens coming down into the first hairpin. That is a big stack up. Jim Moore and Jacob Beichold got jacked up into the air. Ben Atkins is around. It looks like that was the front of this. 
And Andy Pearson got a big lick in the back as well. Here's a look at Ben Atkins in the 84 from the rafters. And Ashley Tucker just breaks too late. That's the front of this whole accident. Jim Moore goes around. And then there's Jacob Eichholz, Atkins' teammate. Now here is Andy Pearson. He really gets jacked up by the 9 car of Lawrence Burr. He almost went right over the top of the 9 car. Well, that's what happens when you have cars whose bumpers don't line up. And Paul Lyons got some pretty heavy damage from all of that chaos on lap number one. That's really unfortunate that Paul Lyons now has some decent equipment. He almost gets wrecked by Tyson Lautenschlager. I'm not sure how necessary that was. But Lyons finally got some decent equipment. And now he's not got anything to show for it. Lautenschlager puts him into the wall again. And now Benji Flynn piles into the back of the 09 car. So that just adds insult to injury for Paul Lyons. And what on earth did Lyons do to Lautenschlager to deserve that? And that's going to take Lyons out of the race. I'm pretty sure he could have continued on had Lautenschlager decided to not be a tool. And I understand that Greisberger and Carls have a very strong alliance. After all, there are a number of Greisberger restaurants inside Carls stores. So I can't imagine the higher-ups are going to be happy with Lautenschlager either. Anyway, Namimura leads her teammate Seiju Dejao at the end of the first lap. Lenore Scurry is making another start for Roos Autosport and she is currently running in third. She crashed out at Saitama while going for a top five, but hopefully she can keep it clean today. Laura Cyrus broke her wrist in that accident with Ramsey Cockner at Saitama. However, she chose to race on it and she is currently in seventh place. But Motor Assault Racing does have Aaron Cruz on standby to take over the 102 car if Cyrus cannot make it the whole distance. I don't think you can count on Cyrus taking them up on that, though. Lenore Scurry tries to make a run at Seiju Dijau for second place. Arianola is lurking back there in fourth. And Scurry can't quite make the move stick. Namimura continues to hold a comfortable lead over her teammate. Coming up on the lap car of AJ Young. Oh, and she just hit the back of the O2. Young was going very slowly as usual. And now Mura's got some front end damage, it looks like. Hopefully that won't slow her down. Mura has really been needing a good run for quite a while. Three are on board with the 39 car. And wow, AJ Young almost came to a complete stop, and then Mura gave him another shove to get him out of the way. Something tells me she wasn't too happy with him. And bad news for Mura, that damage does appear to be slowing her down, as it looks like Dejao has been slowly catching up. And now Mura is coming up on the lap car of Jim Moore, so he might come into play. Coming down into the first hairpin, Mura is going to get trapped behind the 28. Here comes Dejao! Oh, and he gives the 39 a shove and puts her into the wall! But now Dejao is going to take the lead. Let's look at this from on board the 91 car. And I think he wasn't expecting Mura to be as slow as she was after getting trapped behind those lapped cars. But then Dejao would have to deal with those lapped cars himself. And Mura has a go at him. And according to Mura's radio communications, she wasn't very happy with Dejao for that shove. But Mura now gets trapped behind West. And Lenore Scurry moves into second place. And Scurry's bearing down on the 91 as leaders now encounter Jim Moore again. Uh, Moore got away after um, Dejao shoved Mura out of the way. Now Dejao gets trapped behind the 28, and Scurry makes the move for the lead. Oh, she cuts it very close with the 28. That was some very opportunistic driving by Lenore Scurry, but look out for Derek Dudding. And she, I think, got into the back of the 68 car, the very um, ugly 68 car, but still has the 54 on the hood. And there goes Dejao around the 88 car, taking the lead back. So lap cars are really mixing everything up, and Dejao now pulls out to a comfortable lead. Namimura trying for second, but Dunning is blocking her path through the final corner. Oh, and Scurry just put Dunning into the wall! And Scurry's got some pretty significant damage from that, so Scurry bravely sacrificed herself to keep the field safe from Derek Dudding. On lap number nine, Ramsey Cockner is uh, running in the top 10, but quite a ways back behind the leaders, and he just put Holden Roberts into the wall. Roberts was running around very slowly and off the lead lap. Seiju Dejao continues to lead the race by a comfortable margin, but look out for Jason Teller, and Dejao just ran right into the back of the 47 and completely crumpled the front end of that 91 car, so the Kurt Walker cars can't seem to stop hitting people. 
And unfortunately, Dejao is going to have to pit to get that damage repaired, but the 91 crew will get him back out onto the track. As for Jason Teller, he's been running very slowly, and coming into one of the hairpins, he just buries himself in the tire wall. It kind of looked like he just gave up and put himself out of his misery. Now, I've heard rumors that Teller might be replaced when we get back to the States. Is there any truth to this, Earl? I'm not really at liberty to say anything, and I'll just leave it at that. With her teammate being forced to pit, Nami Mura has regained the lead. Mura just turned 18 this year, but she has been competing in the series since 2009. But the exact same thing can be said about Dejao as well. Yeah, they've both been pretty much groomed for racing since birth. Their fathers were both successful racing drivers here in Japan, and now their kids are doing a pretty good job at making the, a name for themselves in American stock car racing. But it's unfortunate that both Mura and Dejao have not had more luck coming their way. Second and third are currently Kiriki Hitsuno and Harry S. Inola. In fact, Enola got his last victory in the Arla Elite Series by benefiting from Mura blowing up. Enola is actually going to be leaving Riggs Motorsports at the end of the year to join Peter Irving Gray's team. He will reportedly be joining J.W. Lester, who finished second at the Mini Indy 500. So Irving Gray, who is a veteran late model owner, uh, has already tasted a bit of success in this series. Namimura now comes across the lapped car of Jason Bates, who's been very slow at the road courses lately, including Saitama. And ironically, I think that Bates is going to be joining Mura at uh, Kurt Walker Motorsports next year. But Bates gives way as Kiriki Hitsuno closes in on Mura. So I think some of these other drivers who are getting lapped could take a lesson from Jason Bates. But again, that did bring Kiriki Hitsuno closer to the 39. Oh, look out for Philip Borland in the pie car. And Mura just shoves him out of the way. Unfortunately, Derek Dotting is still on the track, but Casey Campbell tries to remedy that by putting him right into the wall. And you can very clearly see that the 54 is still on the roof of that car, and that there's just tape on the sides with a 68 crudely drawn on it. On lap number 13, Namimura heads into the pit lane. Kiriki Hitsuno stays out to inherit the lead. Harry Asanola joins Mura. Hitsuno makes her pit stop on the next lap, along with the lapped car of Ashley Tucker. Now watching from on board, Harry Anola, who beat Mura out of the pits. Watching for Kiriki Hitsuno, there she is. Hitsuno takes the lead of the race after pit stop cycle out. But is gonna have to deal with lap traffic. By the way, that is the 65 of Taylor Brillen, and we know how much they like each other. Not. But fortunately, Brillen appears to be giving way to Hitsuno. I'm sure if she hadn't, Hitsuno wouldn't have hesitated to put her in the wall. But the rest of the leaders weren't so lucky. Brillen holds up Namimura, and that is Seiji Dejao going for third. He is still in the hunt after having the front end removed on that car. And Mura puts Brillen into the wall. So Mura is no longer in the lead, but still very intolerant of lapped cars today. Mura is now fourth after being held up by Taylor Brillen, but she breaks way too late, coming into the final hairpin and hits the back of her teammate, Seiji Dejao. I wonder if that was payback for Dejao moving her out of the way while she was trapped behind some other lapped cars. I'm sure that's going to be a very fun post-race meeting at Kurt Walker Motorsports. But Dejao, in the CRL Modified, is continuing to try to hold Mura off, but now Mura's got a run on him coming out of turn number one. This is looking very much like the beginning of the race. But Dejao eventually clears her. Oh, look out for James West! As Mura slams right into the back of the 69 car, and now Mura's got some very significant front end damage. After a very promising start to this race, Mura just couldn't help but slam into the back of several cars, and she just hit her teammate again! And now Mura heads to the pit lane to get the front end removed on that car, and she's going to lose a few more positions. Seiji Dejao would pit once again, but apparently this was planned. His earlier pit stop put him way off cycle, so he wasn't truly in the hunt for the lead, as he knew he would have to pit again. The Walker teammates pitting would put Lenore Scurry back in third place in another one of the CRL Modifieds. Obviously, Scurry's had uh, her fair share of trouble, but she's on track to get a really good finish despite that. I can't help but feel that the attrition rate of this race is um, contributing to that. 
Hiroki Hitsuno comes across the lapped cars of Jessica Graham and Ben Adkins, and she looked about ready to shove Graham out of the way. But thankfully for Graham, there was no contact there. By the way, both Graham and Atkins are in the top 15 at the moment, despite how beat up their cars look. Neither of them have had good seasons, so they're probably going to take what they can get at this point. Hitsuno would eventually clear Atkins, and you see that Enola is stuck behind the 59 car. Tiffany Matthews is currently running in ninth place. She was recently let go from her Team Lights ride, owned by her husband Ryan, by the way. So she'll be focusing exclusively on Arla from now on. Yuriki Hitsuno now comes across Philip Borland. Namimura did not play very nice with Borland when she encountered him. Hitsuno is having a look as Enola bears down, and Hitsuno puts Borland right into the wall. Enola sees an opportunity on the left side, but uh, Hitsuno holds him off. Wow, if you're running a lap down, you just aren't safe, are you? Although I can't really say that I sympathize. Soon afterwards, Hitsuno encounters a gaggle of cars, including the position battle between Leslie Riggs and Alex Carson for ninth place. Casey Campbell is running a lap behind them. And Harry Enola is now trapped behind Gavin DeGray in the 720 car. But Enola would break free, and he hits the back of Kiriki Hitsuno coming into the first hairpin. And that's some significant front-end damage on the 45 car. We've only got a few laps to go, but I'm not sure if Enola can continue on like this. Hitsuno is now having a look on the inside of Leslie Riggs. Oh, there's contact, and she puts Riggs into the wall! Enola sees an opportunity, and he comes after Hitsuno for the lead of the race. Now that just wasn't necessary at all. Riggs was in a position battle with Carson, and Hitsuno just kind of ruined the whole thing. Let's go on board with Hitsuno through this whole mess. She's peeking to the uh, right side of 50 just a little bit, but there was absolutely no forgiveness there. And Riggs almost clipped the 6 and sent her around. And now here comes Enola with the opportunistic move. And Enola moves into the lead with just a few laps to go. But Riggs, unfortunately, would have to go out of the race because of that. Also, here is some bad news for Enola. That impact with the 6 punctured the radiator on car number 45. So, Enola is going to have to drop out of the race with just two laps to go. Enola only has two victories in the series. The first one in his debut in 2007 and the second in 2010. So, Enola's career has been plagued with dry spells. Ramsey Cockiner is going to inherit second place, although it is a very distant second behind Kiriki Hitsuno. But Cockiner, the former um, adult film star, has overall been rather impressive in his few starts in this series. I have to say, I'm looking forward to his rookie campaign in 2013, if that uh, goes as planned. Namimura is still in third place, although she is currently trying to negotiate with the lapped car of Lawrence Burr. Mura's radio communications and the footage we have shown you has probably indicated that she's been having a miserable day, but uh, she is still on the podium, so she ought to be happy about that. But all eyes were on Kiriki Hitsuno, who has succumbed to mechanical failures in the last three races. But today, the MRD engineers are not going to fail her, as the native of Hokkaido brings it around the final corner. And Kiriki Hitsuno claims her very first checkered flag in front of her home crowd. And the Japanese anthem echoed across the stadium. Ramsey Cockner gets his best career finish. Namimura would be the second Japanese driver on the podium. Lenore Scurry finishes a very impressive fourth after the troubles that she has had today. Laura Cyrus does a good job bouncing back from her accident at Saitama. She finished in fifth on that broken wrist. Seiji Dejiao is sixth, so that puts both Kurt Walker cars in the top ten, despite Dejiao and Mura having to make those extra pit stops. Tyson Lautenschlager came home seventh. Uh, Sam Ashford and Brian Rodenberger, the owners of Greisberger Racing and Carl's Racing, were uh, visibly upset over that first lap incident with Paul Lyons. Alex Carson was eighth. Ben Atkins is ninth, despite his involvement in the first lap shenanigans. And then Jessica Graham brings home another top 10 for Aztec Autosport. We know how much that 59 team has needed results like that. 
And now here are the point standings leaving the Nemoto Tokyo 120Ks. Uh, Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. more or less maintains his points lead, but Yevgeny Kuznetsov moves up into second place with his victory. Laura Cyrus is back to third. Rip Tyler is fourth. Eric Jackson is fifth. We believe that Eric Jackson will be returning to Gravity Racing Incorporated as well, joining Rachel Rainsford as the only two full-time cars on that team. We believe that Jackson's car number may be changing, though. Tiffany Matthews moves up into sixth with an 11th place run. Leslie Riggs is now seventh after getting her second straight DNF. She is in a tie with Bigsby Foot for that position. Rachel Rainsford moves up into the top 10, and Alex Carson is 10th. Joseph Howard is 11th, David Krikorian drops to 12th place, Todd Stater is 13th, Andy Pearson 14th. Seiju Dejao moves up into 16th, Michael Madrigal and Kevin Monroe, the M&J drivers, are 17th and 18th. Ashley Tucker is 19th, and Scott Dalitz moves up into the top 20 following that second place finish.